Good day, my name is Bianca Kendall and I am a final year mechanical engineering student at the University of Stellenbosch. I am currently finishing up on my honours year thesis, which involved the development of a self-driven oxygen mixer device. Today I will talk a bit about this project as well as the role that CF Turbo played in it. I will begin by providing some context and background to my project, as well as the objectives that I set out to fulfil. Following this, I will delve into how I used the CF Turbo to achieve my objectives and the resulting centrifugal fan that was designed. I'll walk through how I then built a physical prototype of the design and tested it. I conclude with a comparison of the physical fan's performance to the predictions made for the same fan in CF Turbo, and in doing this, provide my remarks on the success of the project. This project began from an idea posed by my study leader at Stellenbosch University, Professor S.J. van der Spee. He derived the idea from the National Ventilator Project, or the NVP. This is a mandate sent out by the South African government in April 2020 as a call for proposals to rapidly develop and produce ventilation solutions during the COVID-19 pandemic. In response to the call for proposals, Sararo with Stellenbosch University's Department of Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering successfully designed and tested a non-invasive ventilator concept last year. The NVP provides a schematic of a reference design for the ventilator system, which is shown on the right. The point of departure for this project is the mechanical oxygen blender component of the ventilation system, indicated by the arrow, for which Professor van der Spee has proposed the design pertaining to this project. He aimed to determine the feasibility of using high pressure oxygen to drive a turbine, which in turn powers a fan to entrain ambient air. The novelty of this idea is that the oxygen and air can then be mixed without the need for an electrical input. The turbine and fan assembly can then be termed a CPAP generator. This is a type of non-invasive ventilation system that provides a stream of oxygen enriched air that is raised to a steady pressure. It differs from other systems in that it provides the same fixed pressure during inhalation and exhalation. This means the use of turbo machinery to raise the pressure of the airstream is suitable for a CPAP generator. The National Ventilator Project document provides the requirements for any proposed oxygen mixer machine. Those most relevant to the design in this project are extracted and analyzed as shown. For the purpose of demonstrating the feasibility of the proposed design, the lowest pressure level in the required range will be used in the pressure, as the pressure design point of the fan. The broad topic of developing an oxygen mixer device for use in a ventilation system was broken down into separate projects. The part I focused on for my thesis was the development of the fan component for the oxygen mixer device. Once this has been proven feasible, the project can continue to investigate the development of the turbine and eventually the complete mixer. To achieve the task of proving the idea's feasibility, three main objectives were outlined. Firstly, to theoretically design the fan to meet the requirements set out from the, by the MVP. Then to physically build the fan. And lastly, to test the physical fan and measure its performance. CF Turbo was an integral part of this project, as it opened the door to an efficient and accurate method of designing the fan. The main functionalities of the software that I utilized are as follows. It allows for the user to fix certain requirements of the fan, which in my case was useful to do for the flow rate and pressure rise. It was important to have a fan that produced the pressure as required by the NVP and a flow rate equal to the average breathing rate of a human. I needed to design not only the impeller of the fan, but also the casing, for which CF Turbo allows much flexibility. I then needed to be able to export the design in various CAD formats to facilitate the physical building of the fan. In the feasibility study of my project, I compared the fan's performance that CF Turbo predicts to the performance that I measured during physical testing. The use of CF Turbo in my project was an excellent resource as it provided an extremely thorough fan design. After a bit of practice and help from the numerous guides and tips on the CF Turbo website, 
I found the software easy to use, flexible and highly accurate. I was able to tweak the design to my exact specifications with minimal hand calculations and my own design work, which can be long and difficult. I was also able to design for certain performance parameters, which I otherwise did not have the knowledge to do. To begin a fan design in CF Turbo, the user must input the global setup parameters as shown in this table. The 490 pascals corresponds to the lower limit of the pressure range requirement from the NVP. After exporting the completed fan design from CF Turbo, I generated the fan in CAD format as shown. Here you can see stators, parts one and three, a volute and diffuser, part four, and the impeller, part two. For the purposes of a final year thesis, I used my turbo machinery design knowledge from previous years of study to perform hand calculations to compare with the calculations done inherently in CF Turbo. I compared the results of each and found them to correlate very well. The only major difference in values were as a result of assumptions and approximations that I made for the hand calculations. These were not made in CF Turbo since the software makes use of accurate models to determine the values for which I made simplifying assumptions in the hand calculations. Part of the initial concept proposed by my study leader was for the fan to be physically made using 3D printing. 3D printing using PLA material is easy to do, quick to compete, low in cost and provides a product of relatively high strength and accuracy. And after performing calculations for the centrifugal forces exerted on the fan, it was de determined that this method would be suitable for realizing the design. The final product is shown on the right, where it is seen that the stator is mounted on two aluminium extrusions, and a section of standard ventilator tubing is attached to the end of the volute of the end of the diffuser of the volute. In order to test the fan on its own without the turbine, a DC motor is used to rotate the impeller to the required speed. The fan is mounted on aluminium extrusions and the impeller is attached to a shaft. The shaft is coupled to the DC motor and stabilized with ball bearings. The DC motor is powered by a voltage and current input from a bench power supply. To assess the performance of the fan, the pressure and flow rate needed to be measured. The system is therefore set up as shown. A digital pressure transducer is connected to the ventilator tubing via a parallel collection. And a flow meter, in this case a rotor meter is used, is connected in series. A flow valve precedes the flow meter such that the flow can be varied and a fan performance curve can be generated. On the shaft side of the fan, a handheld tachometer is used to measure the rotational speed of the shaft and therefore the impeller. The test procedure is outlined as follows. The voltage input to the motor is set on the power supply and measured using a multimeter. The rotational speed produced by this voltage is measured in revolutions per minute. The fan then rotates and produces a stream of pressurized air which is collected in the volute and exits the diffuser into the ventilator tubing. The flow valve is then closed or opened to achieve the desired flow rate which is measured on the rotometer. The pressure corresponding to the chosen flow rate is measured on the pressure transducer. This process is repeated for various set rotational speeds and flow rates. Although CF Turbo makes provision for running simulation tests, this was outside of the scope of this project, so in this case only physical testing was done. There are three measures used to assess the physical fan's performance. The actual rotational speed required to reach the pressure design point of approximately 490 pascals. The performance curves depicting the pressure rise at varying flow rates and constant rotational speed. And the efficiency curves showing the fan's power output at varying flow rates. On the right is the rotational speed that CF Turbo predicts will produce the design, the design point pressure rise of 490 pascals. Including losses, it predicts a speed of 2,800 RPM. 
The plot on the right depicts that the physical fan actually produced a pressure rise of 490 pascals at a speed of 3583 RPM. This difference can be primarily accounted for by the much higher clearance and recirculation losses that are occurring in the physical fan compared to the theoretical one. This is because in building the physical fan, the gaps between the rotating components of the fan and the stationary components were larger than what was designed. The CF turbo design did not account for these size gaps between these components, but in reality, these gaps were required to separate the rotating parts from the stationary parts. The performance curve generated for the physical fan is shown here. The solid lines depict the system's performance, including tubing and fittings, etc. Whereas the dashed lines are estimations for the fan's performance on its own. The takeaway from this plot is that at this range of varying flow rates, the pressure rise remains relatively constant. This is important for achieving a continuous pressure, as in a CPAP machine. Unfortunately, the fan's behavior for higher flow rates could not be measured due to limitations in the flow meters that were available for testing. The rotimeter used could only measure between 0.4 and 5 liters per minute. The last measure of performance is the efficiency of the fan. The plot on the right shows the efficiency curve as predicted by CF Turbo for the range of flow rates used in the physical testing. The plot on the left shows the actual efficiencies measured for the same range of flow rates. Although the efficiency is much lower than what is expected for a centrifugal fan, the theoretical prediction and the actual measures correlate quite well. To summarize on the comparison between theoretical and actual performance, the rotational speeds to achieve the pressure design point are compared. Although they are different, this can likely be improved if the fan is built again, but with a reduction in the size of the gaps between components. The respective efficiencies to achieve the design point pressure and at a flow rate of 5 liters per minute, which is the maximum flow rate that could be measured, are very similar. Although my work on this project is coming to an end, there is much that can be improved and furthered in this project. Most importantly, the results from physical testing could be far more useful if a flow meter is obtained that can measure a larger range. Improving on the building of a fan to attempt to resemble the theoretical design as closely as possible would also likely produce results closer to those predicted. Concluding on the role of CF Turbo in this project, I can remark that the software was hugely successful in aiding with the fan design to meet the requirements of the CPAP generator concept. Furthermore, not only was it feasible to physically realize CF Turbo's fan design, it was also simple to do this. And although not all the theoretical predictions correlate to the actual measures, this is primarily due to inaccuracies in the assembling of the fan components, which can be improved upon. I would like to finish off by extending my thanks to QFinSoft and CF Turbo for allowing me the opportunity to use the software. It was invaluable in the execution of my final year engineering project, and I am very grateful that I had the chance to use it. Thank you.